I'm Bob Croteau, and uh, I'm part of this uh, Rotary uh, 100th anniversary uh, project. The Park District was looking for renewable energy projects to uh, complement their state-of-the-art uh, Southwind Edwin Watts Park. And um, we had proposed this as an idea for renewable energy sculpture um, that had various aspects to it that would hopefully be educational. The um, uh, Rotary was looking for um, their for their 100th anniversary a signature project to, to instill in the park here, and uh, we got a chance to work with them and come up with a, a design that uh, everyone enjoyed, with, liked it was comfortable. The um, uh, it's basically a solar collector that's disguised as a sunflower, but it's actually a solar calendar. And it can do that as the sun has different positions throughout the year. So in the summertime, the sun is very high in the sky and it casts a short shadow. But as the sun gets closer toward the winter, the shadow grows longer and longer, casting a longer and longer shadow. So as the shadow of the bee, which is the marker, crosses the center line, the calendar line, which is straight north and south, it maps out the days of the year for you. I've been playing with the position of the sun and various, making different sundials and uh, the like uh, in various places where I've lived. As a youngster, I put a mirror in a south window and, and the, sh the reflection up on the ceiling, I was drawing, marking out a grid of where the sun was at different times of the year. My parents eventually painted it, but um, it, I had another one that I could put in a west window and l align the sunsets. I think my favorite one was uh, an old silo, a large concrete silo that had, it was 60 foot tall and maybe 12 foot wide. And I could see this parabola of light in, in the morning come in and go lower and lower until noon it started changing direction and went back up and exited out the other direction. So I was able to mark the lowest point and that became a calendar as well. So another one was moving boulders or fence posts and the like. So it's just been kind of a fascination. Um, I'm an, just kind of an amateur astronomer. I really enjoy seeing the big outdoors and a sense of where the sun's geometry is uh, instills kind of a sense of awe to me about how big things really are and we really only see the world in a short distance. We live in boxes and we live on a flat plane. And hopefully as an educational project, this will help uh, youngsters, uh, no matter what age you are, um, recognize the solar geometry and how, how important it is to us and how we can use it to do our daily planning if we're building homes or communities, how we can use the sun to complement our efforts. I think maybe uh, kids that have grown up in an urban setting have less of a sense of this than, than kids growing up in a rural setting where it's very obvious where the, uh, the sun is and the like. And um, especially if you grew up in a subdivision that was on different diagonal lines, then it's very confusing. But um, the, uh, the hope is that um, as you understand what the sun's doing um, from an early on age, it just becomes more a part of you and you'll better understand the world. You you might, if you get lost, find your way home more easily, which has happened to me, and I was able to just use the sun and figure out what time of day it was by the sun, um, and um, found it to be a very useful tool in my life. Um, I think it, most kids that seem to come here recognize that these are solar panels anymore. In the old days, they might not have, 10 years ago, not known what they might be, but. Now pretty much they do recognize it. And from the back side, uh, I've left the wiring exposed so that it, it is more obvious. I want people to understand what it is from behind, what, what it looks like. And, uh, but uh, as a sculpture, um, it is, uh, definitely has the attraction feature. It, it uh, helps draw uh, kids in to see what it is from a distance. And uh, as they approach, uh, they're met with um, a sundial itself. And uh, this is a, it's a human interactive sundial. So there's a pad that the kids will step on the particular month. They stand on the month that's marked out on this date pad. And their shadow, they become the gnomon and their shadow will tell the time as it falls across these granite oval markers. 
which by the way was another aspect of bringing in uh, their recycled, uh, repurposed pieces of granite from uh, granite uh, countertops that are put in. They'll cut out the uh, section for the sink and they're just kind of a waste product at that time, but they're beautiful pieces. And so uh, we're able to have them etched with the hours of the day. And so there's two rings uh, of them. One is for the summer daylight savings time and the other one is for the winter uh, standard time. So the solar, uh, during the day, it's of course producing electricity that then flows into uh, a cable that goes underground and back into the park circuit, electrical circuit. So it's helping to power devices uh, that are in the, you know, the, the building itself. It's all flowing into the same grid. Um, then at night, however, it is actually lit up. Uh, there is a ring of amber LEDs that go around and help illuminate the pedals. Um, so it's drawing back a little bit of the power that it's produced during the day, just a fraction, but it, to help illuminate it at night. And it has some really nice pictures against that blue dusk uh, sky. As we're developing this, I think uh, you can come during the daytime, anytime uh, the sun's shining, and, and use the sundial. Uh, see how that's going if, if uh, the sun's out. Um, if you're here at solar noon, you can use the calendar line. Um, but you can, even if you're not here at noon, you can kind of get a sense of where the arc is going to cross that line. Um, but then there's also a feature, um, the park, the benches around either side, I call it the calendar commons. And there is a uh, 30 foot diameter circle that has three benches on either end that are aligned to the winter and summer solstices the sunsets and sunrises and and for the equinox as well now we're here at the fall equinox and so i was here in the morning and and saw the sunrise over um, a couple of boulders and the benches and luckily we had a participant who was sitting there watching the sunrise it was nice but um so the benches are aligned um it's fell into place actually with the rotary symbol where it, it lined up with roughly where the, the sunsets are for the solstices. Um, but it seemed like it needed a little further alignment. So we were able to use boulders that were dug up when they extended MacArthur to 72. They were kind of in the way, but they had been deposited here by the glaciers in the last uh, ice age and as as it retreated it just deposited all these boulders from canada so it felt appropriate to bring some kind of antiquity into the installation by having these um, boulders were moved here you know 10 to 15,000 years ago um, as a further alignment so they were 50 feet out from the center on each one but you can then um, help draw your eye to the sun, to the horizon, to the sunsets or the sunrises with them. But the one last thing that uh, at the, the very north end of it is um, there's a, a compass rosette that we made. And I think um, a lot of kids don't know their directions. Again, they don't know if the sun rises in the east or the west, uh, some of them. And so hopefully it's to, as they study this uh, more and more, they're, they're coming to the park and see it. Um, it'll sink in more and more that uh, they'll understand where the sun is at during different parts of the year and where it's rising. So the compass is set up with the north, south, east, west, but it also has the northeast, southwest, and then the north, northeast, south, southwest um, uh, incorporated into it, including the degrees around. So there's 360 degrees in a circle. And so they call that the azimuth. And so they'll, if you're flying or whatever, they'll use those numbers so you know exactly what direction you're flying to, to the nearest degree. And so um, at the end of that, I felt that was appropriate to have it. And, and um, I envisioned that the arms, although we seem to live in a flat environment, the earth is really round. It's just really big, so we don't notice it. So um, there's a plaque at the end near the compass that says, the arms of this compass reach around the earth, gently holding the fragile layer of life clinging to it. Let us do the same. So hopefully that environmental message would stick with them and, and we would then take better care of the earth into the future.